Welcome back. This is Dan Havey. And earlier today, Colton and I were trying to go live into the Hack MLM group. And specifically, what we were going to do is we were going to answer Ricardo's question here. He says, Can you please have them talk about their favorite CSS code that they add to their funnels and the best places to find these tools? Now, as far as the best code, uh, whether it's CSS, HTML, JavaScript, jQuery, whatever, I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge topic, and I'm actually going to be releasing training on that, uh, both uh, for uh, membership sites. I'm going to do a big membership site training. I'm also going to do a big uh, funnel code training uh, later on this year, and um, there, there will be a cost for that. That one's not going to be free like most of my training is. But what I want to do today is just go through some things, show you some of the things that can be done inside of ClickFunnels, especially inside of membership sites, then we're going to look at how, um, you know, just some simple hacks that I use all the time. And then I'm going to show you not only how to do them, but where to find more information. And just anytime you have a question, the best sites to go to, the best places to look uh, for when you want to do something. So like an example I'm going to show you in a little bit here is going to be how to have an image enlarge when you hover over it. So we're just going to search for that and we're going to find some code and then we're going to show you how to do it inside of the site. But before we do that, I just want to show you a couple of things because I do a lot of specialty coding. And inside of ClickFunnels, there's one thing I really, really love about it, and that's it's infinitely extendable. You can do just about anything you want to massage these sites to make them look any way you want. So here is a membership site. And actually, let me just click on the reload button here. Because you're going to see as this page loads, there's going to be a box spinning right up here in the middle with my logo for my ninja on it. And then when it's done spinning, then the page is going to move up. Now, the reason I put that in there initially, and we're going to have trouble because I'm recording here, so it's not going to be perfect. The um, reason I put that in there is because I have so much content in this membership site, it actually takes a while for everything to load up. So I thought, well, while we're doing this, why not put in this animation? And then it comes in here, and we have what I did here is I nested some of these different menu items and things inside of a different menu item. So we have a what would be a section here. We have these other sections built right into it. And as I click on different things, you can see clearly that things open and things close. And if I come up here to the top, we can close this and click on this and, and close everything out. At least it should be. But again, I'm, I'm running slow here because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm recording. So either way, um, I have all kinds of content in here. But now let me just show you uh, if we come in. And um, this here is the content in here that makes that spinning box. And we'll come up here to a little uh, bookmarklet that I built that when I click on it, it opens up the tracking code box for me and it's resizable so I can grab a hold of this and I can size it out any size I want and this is going to be definitely something that when I do my full-blown paid training I'm going to show people how to create this kind of stuff and give them the code in order to do it but as you scroll through here you're going to see this is all of the different JavaScript code now a lot of it I have commented out now because I made changes but I wanted to keep the code uh, but this is all the code I did in order to code out that membership site to make it do all kinds of cool stuff. And then I also have the same thing up on top here where I have a bookmarklet for the CSS. And again, it makes it resizable, which is nice because, you know, you're having trouble seeing something. You can make it really skinny and or make it really short. And then you can see uh, what's going on in the background without having to close it out. And again, I've got here you know, 120 plus lines of CSS code that I use to custom build this form in my CF Ninja Hacks program. And But this one here, I left it so it would really pretty much look like a standard ClickFunnels membership area. Whereas this other one here that I built for my Quick Start Blueprint training, which all the training in here is also in CF Ninja Hacks, but in CF Ninja Hacks, there's just 10 times more training. And in both cases, both of these programs are completely free if you want to go check them out. But let's go to the live page itself right here. And in here, how I have this set up 
is it doesn't look anything like a standard ClickFunnels uh, membership site, but it works exactly the same. So we're here on module one, it would, would be section one inside of ClickFunnels, and we can click on then module two, and that would be then take you to section two, just like if you were in a regular uh, ClickFunnels membership site. And then over here on the right hand side is where we have our lessons for each one of these modules. And as I click on it, it will open up and, uh, well, come on, like I said, everything's running really slow here. So um, that was one of the problems that Colton and I have, were having earlier is we couldn't get anything to work right. And so what it did is it opened up the video because I must have clicked on it twice and it opened up the video. But so if you click on one of these, it should open up the one for Actionetics MD and then close everything else and then vice versa here when I click on that one or this one it'll do the same thing now in the quick start blueprint here I do have a lot of new content I have to put up because I have not fixed things like since they got rid of Actionetics and and a few other things but one of the one of the things I do a lot of the time is on a hover so somebody doesn't necessarily know that this is a button but if you make it so that when somebody hovers over it it gets bigger and gets a gray background around it, it will let people know that it's going to be a button that they can click on. Also, in this case here, you can see that the images are black and white, and again, as you hover over it, it they become colorized. So I did that as well. For that one, that one doesn't really matter, but here's one here again. It goes the red and the blue once you hover over it. And so that's a trick that I like to use a lot of the times. Uh, especially down here, you got, okay, come on, back up here. You have, I just rebooted before I started all this, and it's still being all wonky. Um, on each one of these images, these again are also links, obviously, they're all affiliate sales. And so the same thing here, the image gets a little bit bigger, and in most of the cases, I have a little bit of gray shadow around the outside of it. So let me, uh, let me see here what other tabs that I have open. I have this page here for my funnel launch challenge. And so I do a lot of training in click funnels, but I also do it in drop funnels. And if you don't know what drop funnels is, drop funnels is a WordPress based funnel builder. So click funnels is just a standalone funnel builder. Drop funnels is for if you want to create more of a web presence, um, go for the organic traffic kind of a play and you know more of a long-term kind of thing instead of with click funnels you just put up a bunch of funnels and kind of test them drop funnels is if you want to do blogging you want to put up just standalone pages and it also has a membership site built in besides being able to do all of the the funnel type stuff as well and so in my training for that I built out what um, Steve and uh, Russell have been calling funnel hubs and they had funnel hubs built for themselves, and in my understanding, they were very, very expensive. So inside of Drop Funnels, what I did is I came in and I said, I'm going to build out the exact duplicates of the funnel hub homepages that uh, Russell and Steve and Garrett White had. And so I built those out. And so here is my version of what Steve's site looks like. This is his Stephen J. Larson, sorry, Steve J. Larson site. And I basically built it out so it was exactly the same because here is the original that he has. And as you see, as you scroll down, things open up exactly like they did on mine. The only thing I couldn't build into mine was the module here. And this is just something you get from the podcast provider to be able to show it. And so then in here, there's a whole bunch of CSS. So as you hover over this, it highlights it. Um, same thing there. Actually, that might have been a built-in function. But this here, the movement of these icons, this is all custom CSS that you could do on something. And let me see, that's about it. There was quite a bit in here. Oh, like these elements here, how they move over. See the arrow moves over when you hover on this one. So you can make it so you can hover on one element and it will actually affect another element when you do it. So I want to come back to the Funnel Launch Challenge and take a look at this because this is the one thing I want to show you because I use it quite a bit. You saw it on a bunch of different pages. So when you come in here and hover over this image, I'm pretty sure this is an image. I'd have to actually look at the code. Let's actually do that. Let's go in here. Let's look at the code. 
And so let's take a look here. So we do have this set as an image, and I have um, a link where it'll go to. And so now let's just take a look. Well, actually, let's click on this first. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to come down and find the CSS ID selector. So it's image 54499. And so let's come up to the CSS and take a look at what we did there for it. And what I did, because I had four images on this page, what I actually did is I set a data title. So we could put in here that image 54499, whatever it was, we could put that in here with a hashtag in front of it and then put in this code and then it would run that code and I don't need this extra line here. Uh, it would do that or we can go in and we can set a data title so that each one of them, all four of them, are going to use exactly the same code. So let me show you how I did that. So here we'll just go into this item and we'll come down to our hashtag and all I did here is I put in product image and I clicked on update it saved it and then we'll go back to the CSS so we have here product image just like I said and you just got to make sure you put the quotes and everything around it properly actually technically I should probably have this be a, a double quote here just to keep things consistent from one uh, one thing to another because if you were to call this with some jQuery code you would actually put uh, a, it'd be a dollar sign, a couple of brackets, and then a single quote on either side of these square brackets. And so just to keep it uh, straight from one place to the next. Now, what this says is what we want to do to this image is we want to transform it over a half a second time period. Now, we could put in 500 and that would be 500 milliseconds, or we can put in 0.5 seconds. So it's going to take half a second for this thing to change when we hover over it, okay? So then the second part here that says hover at the end, colon hover, means when we hover over it, do this. And what it is is we want to transform it on a scale of 1.1. So it's going to increase it in size by 10%. That's the 1.1. And then it's going to create a box shadow around the outside of it. It's going to be one pixel, one pixel on the shadow, but it's going to have a spread of 10 pixels and a blur of one pixel. I'm pretty sure I got that right, but we'll see that in a minute here. And then the color we want on it is going to be 000, which is going to be black because it's RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. So it's zero red, zero green, zero blue, which is black. And then it's going to be the alpha or the opacity of it is going to be one tenth. So it's not going to be dark black. It's going to be a, a light gray, transparent black color. So let's just go back into here and take a look at that again. So we have, we have the shadow goes all the way around the outside. It has a 10 on the spread, so it's going to make it go everywhere, and I'll show you this in a minute. And then it's just this light grayish color on it. Now, so the question you have for yourself is, if you wanted to do this, where would you find a place to do this? So let's just open up a new tab, and all we're going to do is we're going to search here, and we're going to say, in, in a case like this, I know I want some CSS, so we're going to just say CSS, and then we're going to say, um, let me see here, on hover um, enlarge image. Or we could say, uh, in, you know, um, make an image bigger on hover, you know, something like that. It'll figure it out. How to zoom on hover with CSS. Now you're going to see here, there's a couple of places that are going to come up all the time, and there's a couple of places you should always use. Two of them are right here on my screen. The two main ones I use all the time is W3 Schools and Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow guys are good for especially more complicated things. So let's just start with the W3 Schools and click on this. So we can come down here, it says hover over the green box and then boom, it gets really big. But again, you can see even on this side here how slow everything's running, so I apologize for that. So now let's come down here and uh, so it's saying here style. And what, what they're calling this here is they gave it a class of Zoom. And all this here says basically what do we want this box to look like initially. So we got uh, padding of 50 pixels, background color of green, 
And here is that transition again. Let me see, let's go back into here, CSS. Okay, so here we got transition, transform, half a second. Over here we have transition, transform, 0.2 seconds. And then width, height, and the margin. So this basically just says how big this box should be. That's what that says. Inside of click funnels or drop funnels, if you were using that, you don't have to put in this code. You would just define the box or the element or the image or whatever right inside the editor itself. And then it says zoom on hover. We want to transform the scale to one and a half, 1.5 times. And in our case, we were just at 1.1. So ours is, ours is going to get bigger, but not nearly as big as the other one is going to get. Because as you saw there, I mean, that box gets pretty big. So I didn't want that kind of an effect. I just wanted a, a little bit of an enlargement. And it takes, again, half a second to get there. So you get a little bit of animation, and it just kind of zooms in and out a bit. So that is really it. Um, we'll go here. Now, the nice thing with going into W3 uh, schools is you can always click on the Try It Yourself button. So we click on that, and you can come in here, and you can start messing around with this code. So let's just say we want to start off with a width. Uh, let's make this only 100 pixels. So we'll click on Run, and now it made it much smaller. And so then if we hover over it, oops, Again, problems running here. Uh, as you hover over it, see then it gets big again. And then let's do this. Let's make our transform. Uh, let's just make it 1.1. And they have the code in here for Safari and IE9 and all that stuff. I, I tend to not put that in. That may be right or wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being lazy. But so now you see it only increases by 10%, not by 50%. And something I've never tried before, let's try just putting in 0.5 and see if that makes it smaller. Should. Let's see what happens. So we'll click on run, come over hover, and there you go. So you can even make things smaller as you hover over it. So now let's go back to where we had started from with the search, and I will show you what, um, what Stack Overflow has. Like I said, this is much, much more complicated stuff. This is guys who are top level coders all around the world, all contribute to this site for free. And I get all kinds of really great ideas out of here. So somebody comes in, they ask a question, how do I do something? And then you get a bunch of different answers down here. There's not much for answers on this one. Some of these will have thousands of people uh, thumbing them up, you know, dozens of different answers. And so it's really a great place to learn any kind of code you're looking for. It's not just CSS. Like I said before, it's HTML, it's PHP, it's every programming language you can think of out there. You can find on Stack Overflow or some of its sister sites that um, have similar names to them. So let's just do another question here. So we had that box shadow around it. And so let's say CSS, how to put a shadow around a box. Let's just do that, see what happens. Okay, CSS box shadow, we got CSS tricks. That's another good site, guy puts out a lot of good content there. But again, from a beginner standpoint, let's just go with, uh, we got CSS box shadow property, let's just go here. And so we got box shadow, five pixels and 10 pixels. And then we got five pixels, 10 pixels, and this color of all eight. So let's just try this ourselves. And let's see what this looks like. So we got diff three different boxes right here. And you see here border of one pixel all the way around the top box here. We got one pixel around that. We got a padding of 10 and a box shadow of five and 10. Now you're going to see here is the five is going to be your left and right. So here, here's the five. That's gonna be left and right, but it's not left and right, it's only right. And so we have five over here on the edge and we have 10 on the bottom. And because no color is put in here, it automatically assumes it's black, which would be all zeros. So now on the next one here, we have five and 10 and the color of all eights. And you're gonna see it says lighter gray color. 
and then 5, 10, and red, and you're going to see that down here. But now, let's go up here, and again, we can change this code all we want, and let's make this 15. Now, we may have a problem. It may run off the edge of the screen, and so let's click on Run, and it does kind of go off the edge, but you can see it got wider when I put in the 15, but let's just change it to a uh, shadow of 1. Oops, come on. And let's make this 20 on the bottom, and we'll run that. And so now we have a very sliver over here and a whole bunch at the bottom. Now, we can keep going on this, but actually, let me just go back to the lesson and see what else they say in here. Because they're going to have to go into the next number of steps. So, okay. So here it defines what we're looking at. And so you, you can set this as default value, no shadow is displayed. Okay, well that makes sense, but why would you put in box shadow if you didn't want a box shadow? Um, so this one here, the first number you put in is your horizontal offset, so right and left. Then you have your vertical offset. Then you have your blur and your spread. And then the color after that. And then you can also set whether it's inset or well, you can do inset, I guess you don't set outset because that's the default, and initial and inherit, you don't have to worry about those. Uh, so inset, it would be on the inside of the box instead of on the outside of the box. So let me see here, they, I think they say they got some more examples down here. So let's just do, let's just click on this example and then we'll just kind of play with it from there. Okay, so in this case here, we have five, 10, and eight. So let me just put this back down to zero so we can go back to where we started from. Okay, so this is like the last one. We had five here on the right, 10 on the bottom, and we don't at this point have any, let's go back here and just make sure it gets this right. Because I always mess this up. So you got blur and you got spread, okay? So let's go back into our example here. And so we got five to the right and 10 to the left, or 10 to the bottom. But now if we put in a negative number and run this, what it's going to do is it's going to put it now off the left-hand side. And the same thing if we go negative on the 10 and we run this, it's going to go around the top. So now let's just set those back. Take that back out. Because normally you leave those numbers alone, but then you do the blur and you see how it gets blurry there, but that's not really what we want to do. Let's say we want to put this all the way around. What we need to do is put in a fourth item, which is going to be our spread. And so we will click on run for that. And now you see it starts to go up around the top and everything too. So a lot of times what I like to do is you can just do a real light, um, right and a real light bottom and then run it and then see it kind of goes all the way around but then what we might want to do here is let's see what happens if we take out the first number so that's not going to work because it gives us a spread of 10 but no blur so normally what you do is you do the opposite here and you do a big blur with a very light spread if any spread and now you have that box that's going all the way around. So now let's actually increase this out. Now let's do this out to 20. And maybe, let's see what happens if we put 10 in here. We'll hit that. And so, I mean, you can go a lot of different ways. You can obviously do a red color down here or anything you want. Uh, but that's how you get a shadowy box all the way around the outside. Now the next thing here is we can look at the color and we have a hexadecimal color here. Well, let's say we want to make this so we have opacity on it. We don't want it to be that terribly dark. So we go RGBA, and then we'll just do a little bracket like that, and we'll do 0, 0, 0. So again, that's 0 red, 0 green, 0 blue, and then we're going to do a, an opacity of let's just say 0.5 for right now and we can click on run and now let's see did I do something wrong it didn't seem to take that let's go back over here let's look at where 
is that? What did I do wrong? Let's just copy this. Okay, there we go. Let's add a typo in there somewhere. I don't know what I did. Um, so now we have just a very light shadow around the entire thing. And in fact, what did we have over here? We had 1-1-10-1. So we can come in here and 1-1-10-1. One, 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 and run that. And now we have the shadow all the way around there. So we just looked at how do you have it pop off the screen and how do you put the shadow around it. And again, we come back and this is what we end up with. Now, one other thing you can do, and I do this all the time, and what I'm about to show you, I'm going to tell you, don't do this while you're inside the editor. You only want to do this from a live page. And the reason why is if you come in here and you change the CSS or anything else inside of the editor, and then you come up and you click the Save button up here, what it'll do is it will save what you do in the Inspector tool inside of the funnel, and you won't know it's there because it won't show up anywhere. So only do it when you're outside of the, of the, of the editor itself. Do it on a live page. Or you can do it on a preview page because what you're going to do is just looking to see what it's going to be like, and then you're going to go in and you're going to write it in as actual code. So we're going to go anywhere on the page here. We're going to right-click. We're going to inspect. And the way I have my inspector tool set up, I have it always along my left-hand side. And I and you can, you can change that by, I think you click here, yeah. This will decide where it's going to be. I always keep mine to my, to my left. And then I also keep this wide enough so that these two columns show up down here at the bottom. So I can see every bit of everything I'm, I'm looking for on here. And it does, it looks like a bunch of gobbledygook, don't worry about that. So now let's just say we want to look at this item right here. So let's right click on this and we're going to inspect that again or else we could have clicked up here and then inspected this item. But we need to find this headline item and actually in uh, Java, in um, ClickFunnels, we want to actually grab the item above it. And so we have this item here, and now let's say we want to, we come down here, we can click on the plus sign, we don't really need to, but this gives you your, um, your ID selector right there. And so we're just going to put in here that we want to put in a box shadow. And then we want this again to be one pixel, one pixel, 10 pixels, one pixel, and then we're going to put in that color of RGBA of uh, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1. And there we go. So now we have that in there. Now you just saw me, I typed in the entire thing. The truth is there's actually a shortcut to this where we can come down here and we can say, there's a couple different options for it here. So we can add a text shadow, we can add a box shadow, add color, which would be the color of the text, uh, add a background color, or insert style rule below. But okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a box shadow. And so we'll click on the box shadow. And we have our offsets here. So we can just grab this and just pull it up anywhere we want. And let's just leave it there for now because I want to click up here to get the highlight off of there. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's come back down here and see what that did is it wiped out the one above it. So we'll just click on that just to make sure it's wiped out. Now we're, we're back in here and if you want to edit this again, you just come over and you click on that. You open that editor back up. And so you can just swing this thing around and go, okay, well, what do I want this thing to look like? Then you can go with your blur setting. And so in our case here, we had that blur of 10 and we had a spread of one. But again, we can make that spread and we can go, wow, let's bring way out really big or really small. And then we got that blur of 10 and then we can swing this around.
But in our case, now the further you get out, you see it's not going to go all the way around the entire thing unless we go much bigger with our spread. And then it'll kind of sort of get around it. But let's just go back down to our 10. And we'll bring that down to 0. And now all we're going to do is bring this back up here to our 1 and our 1. And of course, you can just type it in right here as well. And there you go, now we have the same thing. Now up here at the top, you can also tell it to be an inset. So instead of being on the outset, we're gonna do an inset. And again, this is very similar inside of ClickFunnels. You have the ability to make a, a box shadow on the outside or inside, but here you get to decide how big you really want it, whereas in ClickFunnels you have the, the presets and that's all you have. So let's just make it like that. And then what we can do is just click outside of this, and I think I just moved it. So we click out of it, and what we can do then is we can just copy this. So we copy that, come over into our code, open up our CSS, and just a couple carriage returns, and we paste it in, and you see in the background, as soon as I did that, it automatically put in that code as well. And because we took out that one line of code, it's still showing in here. So what, you don't need that in there, so you can just, just delete that part out and be done with it, and it'll work just fine. Now there's one last thing I want to show you, because I know at this point here is pretty much drinking from a fire hose. But uh, what we got here is we have hover. So let me go back into the inspector and show you how we can deal with a hover element. So let's say, again, right here, this is an element that we have a hover on. So let's go here and let's inspect this. And so we come to our image wrapper. So we'll click on that. And now what we said in our code is that when we um, come in here, let me see here, where is, okay, so data title, product image. So we named everything product image. And so what we said is on hover, make it do something. But if you look in the code here, you're not going to find it. You're going to find the first part here where it says title equals product image transition transform over half a second. We have that there. But in order to see what will happen on hover is you've got to click on where it says hover here. Now I am in Chrome. If you're working in Safari or Firefox or somebody else, some of this stuff might look slightly different. But you click on the hover and then you click here on hover and then it will give us the hover state. And so now this code popped in here and also you're going to see that it got bigger and it also put the put the shadow around it. So let's turn the hover back off and you're going to see you can toggle it right there. But you won't ever be able to see the code if you don't come in and turn on the hover in the first place. So I think that's enough for this training. I think that answers, uh, what was it, Ricardo's, I think, uh, answered his question. And uh, just wanted to go over a few things, show you that, you know, ClickFunnels, you can do basically anything you want with it. It's really infinitely extendable. And I was just noticing right here, I really don't need this div in front of here. Um, that's completely unnecessary. All you need in this case is the CSS ID selector for this element. So that is it. I'm going to leave this training alone for right now. I'm going to drop it into the Hack MLM group. And so if you have any questions about any kind of CSS training or anything like that, if you have any questions about drop funnels, uh, if you're interested in doing any kind of blogging and doing funnels along with that blogging, just feel free to reach out to me um, and I'll, I'll get you a link to my drop funnels training and all the bonuses I have for anybody who wants to sign up for that. So um, until um, next time, I hope you all have a great day.